Hello, I'm Josie, instructional designer at NearMap, and I'm a bit excited about this session because this is when the fun happens. We're going to get our hands dirty without leaving our desk or couch. I'm going to show you how to create multiple design systems, both manually and automatically, using NearMap oblique imagery to accurately position the roof and determine its slope. So strap yourself in, because this is a big bit. You have a solar job that you're going to quote on. You'll need to create a project so we can start designing. Jump to the project zone and click create a new record and enter the address. If it's a customer you've dealt with previously, you can just assign from previous contact. At this point, there's some optional administration. If your business has a dedicated administrator, he or she might complete these steps. It might be useful to add some tags to your project, set a priority, and assign it to other team members, along with handover notes. If you have a bill from your customer, you can select the type of bill. If not, you can leave it as default, and OpenSolar will base the energy usage on its data source for the address location. You don't have to fill this section out to proceed and you can always add these later before you generate the proposal. Okay, let's get designing. So from here, click on Create and Design and it will take us to the Studio tab and the address that you're going to work on. If you're jumping into OpenSolar straight from logging in, you would simply find the address on the OpenSolar landing page in Project Zone and click on the studio icon. With your NearMap Oblique subscription, you'll see the address from the aerial view, plus all of the photos, that's oblique photos in NearMap speak, from various compass directions. To start using NearMap Oblique content, you need to be designing in full design mode. If you don't see the Oblique's thumbnail across the bottom, and you have a NearMap Oblique subscription, click Enable Full Design and go to Settings, Studio Preferences and then turn off Start in Basic Mode. Then go to Settings and select Restart Design. Now each time you log in you'll always be in Full Design Mode. To the left we have our System Design pane which is like our toolbar. Across the top we have a tab for each system you design for this project. You can design many systems for your project. As soon as you create more than three systems, these tabs disappear and are replaced by a drop-down menu with each system listed. To the right here is your compass. There are some more drawing tools here in the bottom right-hand corner. Panels, inverters, batteries and other components are all set up in the same way. So if I click on the panels and click select, this brings up the panel database, showing your most frequently used modules, or your active modules, on the left. On the right is your database of 18,000 panels. You can just search by brand, or you can search by product code. And then once you find the panel you want, you just hit select, and it will add itself to your active modules list. If you can't find what you're looking for, you can create your own just by clicking Create Module. This takes you back to Control Zone and you'll be prompted to save your project. So you would download the spec sheet from Google and use the information from it to fill out the fields. It's the same for inverters and batteries. We already saw how to set up the default in Control Zone. Click back on Studio to return to your design. To include other components into your design that may have an associated cost of goods, such as tilt frames or different labour installation fees from third-party installers, simply add a component and select from the list or create a new one. Advanced settings is where you recalculate your design and set up the system lifetime. For an upgrade project, you would model the existing system and indicate this as the existing system by checking this box, existing system to upgrade, and then you would create new systems to be the upgrade designs. Now let's choose the pricing scheme for this customer. Click Price under Pricing and Payment Options. 
You can see here we have price per watt by size. Click on this to see other pricing options. We set these up in module two, set things up. So check back in on that video if you want a refresher. The one that we set up is markup percentage 20%. Let's select it. Then you've got your price breakdown here for your eyes only. And then here is where you choose the incentives to add to your proposal. This is populated from your design. We'll see this populate once we've placed some panels on the roof. Again, you would just need to create this list yourself in the control zone and go in and edit the pricing to suit. For example, STC point of sale is location based. Now you can place panels on the roof. There are two ways to do this. You can place panels manually or you can let Open Solar place them for you. Let's look at the manual way first. Just click plus panels at the top of your page and you can see that there's a panel that's following my cursor. Just click and drag and place those panels on the roof. Super simple. You know that this panel group is selected because it has this yellow rectangular outline. It's also highlighted up here on the panel groups that it's a panel group of 33. And over on the left, you can see we have panel group 1, 33 modules. So this is the toolbar that you can use to make changes and display details of the panel group that you've selected. If you want to remove or add panels, just click between the white grid lines like so. You can also drag across the grid lines. To move this panel group, we're going to head over to the toolbar. Click on Move Horizontal, grab this yellow circle, and move this over to here. We can change the azimuth from the left-hand pane here. Just straighten that up by clicking the up or down arrow. You can change the orientation of the panel group just by toggling between portrait and landscape like so. If, for example, you're working on a flat roof and you don't want any shadows casting on any of the panels, you can add gaps between the X and Y axes just by entering a gap measurement. The other way to place panels is by outlining the roof profile and letting Open Solar place the panels for you. This method is available with a basic subscription, but with an oblique subscription, you have the advantage of being able to measure the slope of the roof as well. At this point, I should tell you that there's a third way to measure a roof with Nearmap on Open Solar, and that is by using our DSM 3D content. We'll look at that in the module called Design in 3D. For now, let's take a look at how to design your solar system using Nearmap Oblique. Make sure you're still in studio and have the address in view. Select Drawing Tools and then Roof. Now you'll see a blue dot that's following the cursor. First, we map out the roof facet by clicking on each of its corners. Once we close that out, at the top left-hand corner, you can see we have a roof facet and you can also see its area. If we just zoom in a little bit, you can see this red section here. That's the setback, 0.3, from the gutter and ridges. We set that up in the control zone. Next, we identify each of the edge lines by right-clicking on the edge line and selecting the edge type. Each edge type is color-coded. So for this line, we select edge type as gutter and it shows us that the setback is 0.3. Remember that you can create multiple different setbacks and other design settings in control zone. So if you're working in different regions with different regulations and you need to apply a different setback, just select the one you need. If you need to apply a different set of setbacks, you also need to switch your proposal template on the project page. That way the studio will reflect the correct setbacks. Remember that setbacks are unique to the proposal template. So if you're working in multiple regions with different setbacks, this will require multiple proposal templates. You can create additional templates in the control zone. Let's continue identifying each edge until the facet is complete. You can see that it's also taking the measurement of the azimuth on the left hand side. Now we can indicate any roof obstructions such as chimneys and flues. Click on Drawing Tools Obstruction. 
We can click on this flue here and we can change the size of it too. And we can right click to change its shape. Now we're ready. Click just within the roof facet and hit Auto Layout. Open Solar will place as many panels as it can into the measured area, taking into consideration the setbacks, the abstractions and anything else. If you don't want a gap between the panel rows, just click on the panel group and over on the left, you can just remove that figure. And then you can add some panels over here simply by clicking the empty space next to the panel. One of the things that makes Nearmap on OpenSolar so powerful is that you can determine the slope of the roof without visiting site. And of course, once you know the roof pitch, you can automate cost to be applied to any pitch you deem to be steep or very steep. We set this up in control. Here's how you measure the roof slope. Click on a different oblique image thumbnail. This is where the oblique images are super useful because they let you see that roof facet from different compass directions. Once the oblique image loads, you can see that the roof facet we drew isn't aligned. The program will also tell you it's not aligned just here in the bottom right hand corner. We'll align the roof to the image. From tools at the bottom right, click on align and drag just the image until the roof facet we drew aligns with the roof in the image. Click to confirm that that's correct. Now align the drawn ridge line with the ridge on the image by selecting the edge. Check the left hand pane to ensure it says edge. Click move up and down. Now grab this arrow and align it with this line of the ridge here. Then click to confirm. Click on the roof facet and you can see the slope measurement. And if you've got a steep pitch range of 25 to 40 set in your control settings, then in this scenario, the customer will get charged out accordingly for your working on a specific steep pitch roof. So if you're happy with that and you want to include this image in your customer proposal, you can click the show customer checkbox just up here in the left and then a little show customer banner will appear on the image thumbnail. All images with this banner will be included in the proposal. If for example you wanted to model an existing system as it looked when it was installed several years ago, no problem, you can access Nearmap's full catalogue of vertical imagery. You can click here and just go back to the historical imagery and this particular location has vertical imagery all the way back to 2009. Now if you wanted to add another panel group, for example in this spare space here, you can do that just by clicking on plus panels and dragging them in. And you can change the orientation just like that so it fits. And then you can see that OpenSolar displays each panel group and the total number of panels it contains. Click on a panel group and you can see the information in the left pane reflects the panel group you've selected. So if you want to make any changes, you're only making changes to the specific panel group you've selected. Let's name this design. Now we'll add a battery. The inverter is already chosen because I have my inverter modelling set to automatic in control settings. Right, that's our first system, the first design option for our customer. How about we create a second system option for our customer? All you need to do is click plus system, new system. We've already done the groundwork measuring the roof, so all we need to do is lay different panels or array the panels in a different way. I think we'll do both. Hit select and I'll choose Canadian Solar 345 panels. And click on Auto Layout. We might want to remove some of those panels so that both our systems are comparable with the same number of panels. And we can give this system a name. So now we have two designs. You can see here one has a battery and an inverter and the other only has panels. If you want to do your own stringing, you can set that to manual. That's an advanced operation that we're not covering here. But with inverter modeling set to automatic, OpenSolar picks the right amount of inverters for the amount of panels that you've chosen. And it does the stringing for you. To save the design, click on the cog at the top right and hit Save Design. 
your design is done. We hope you can see how flexible the open solar application is and how near map imagery can really help you accurately position solar panel arrays and save you that site visit. Now it's time to send the proposal. This is the next video in this series and you'll find it in the Knowledge Hub right below this video. While you're there, you'll find links to Open Solar's articles and ways to sign up to Open Solar's regular newsletter and deep dive webinars. This was a big session and we've covered a lot of ground, so pat yourself on the back, have a breather, have a practice, and come back and watch the next video. See you then.